Hey guys, Sefi Tufan here, and in today's video, I want to show you how you can build a cursor app without hard coding all of the workflows and instead use AI agents from NA10. We'll go over why it's a smart solution, when to use it, how to set it up, and we will even build a complete app together. So stay until the end to see how we are going to do it step by step. And without further ado, let's begin. Okay, so as I start every single project, I first create a document and this document will be the MVP that will be an overview of the complete project. So in the beginning, I started with the core philosophy. So what we are going to build today is I'm going to take my personal assistant. So this is my personal assistant on NA10. She's connected to my email calendar, Notion, Zoom, contacts, ClickUp, and even the lights in my office and the internet. And we are going to trigger her by using a webhook that will bring the information from the application. It will go through this entire process and in the end it will send us a return HTTP request with the information that the assistant did. So how it's going to work? From an MVP perspective, what I wrote in the project plan and if you're a beginner in this and you want to learn in depth how to start using cursor, I created a video about this so you can check it in my channel. So in here, I will start by laying down the core philosophy, so the overview of the MVP. This assistant exists to provide a clean, simple interface for communicating with your personal assistant through webhook integration. I created a bit of the core philosophy, what is the core problem statement, and then I went into the core functionalities. We're gonna have a basic message exchange. The user can type and send messages, get the response from the personal assistant, can see the message history and can clear history of the conversation. What we are going to use is a backend webhook integration. And to do so, we are going to use a local tunnel. So in essence, our local environment is not really connected to the internet. And this is why we need a bridge to connect our local environment to the webhook itself, which is connected to the internet. And we are going to use local tunnel to do so. And it's part of the packages that we will install. So from a webhook process perspective, what we are going to have is we will have our local application. It will make a post request to the NA10 webhook URL. Then we will get the post request will contain the message itself. It will trigger the webflow. Then the webflow will generate a response. It will generate the HTTP back to the application through the local tunnel. Then the application will receive this post request containing the response data, and then it will display it to us on the user interface. So I wrote a couple of core pages, which is just like the main conversation interface, some conversation focus, the key user flows, and the tech stack. I just want to quickly say when it's wise to use it. So when you think about it, you can use this to build a pretty robust solution for your users without really needing to hard code all of the workflows. You can use those AI agents, you can use the workflows through NA10. The moment it becomes not effective, it's when you have so many workflows executions that the cost of running an N8N account with so many executions is higher than bringing an employee, a developer, who can hard code all of those processes into your system. So in essence, you can reach a point where you have 1,000, 5,000 users in your application and still use the 60,000 workflows that you can execute on the N810 account. So from my perspective, it's a very simple solution to build an application, to build an MVP in a very efficient way, very fast, and launch it very fast while you still have a lot of control on the workflows themselves. Because let's be honest, the difference between using N810 and building a workflow versus hard coding this inside your application is so much simpler to do it on N810. So from my perspective, this is when you should do it. And before we continue, just a quick note, if you want, you can check in the description below. There is a link to my school community where you can learn how to build apps using Cursor, how to build AI agents using NA10, and even how to market those to get clients to your 
automation agency or users to your application. So again, check the description below and you will find a link to the community. So to start the process, I'll just let Cursor AI start developing the app, the pages. And meantime, we will go over the personal assistant to see how you can start setting up the webhooks. Okay, so I just told them to start building the MVP. I asked them to start by setting up the environment and all the needed packages and then to build the pages we need. Okay, so while he is running and building everything on YOLO mode, let's just go over what I've added here. So in the beginning, to start the process, what I did is I added another trigger and I added on webhook call. So in this webhook call, we have two URLs. The first one is the test one and then the production. So for this example, we'll use the test that will be saved in our environment local file. Then we will use the post HTTP method. And in the response, it's very important that we change it from immediately because we don't really immediately send the response. We need the entire operation or the workflow to go through. And then we will use the when less node finishes. So just in the end, and we will do all entries. So everything that comes in the end will be sent back. Then in the end of the process, what I did is I, I added an HTTP request. And as you can see, I changed this one to post back and we will have the URL. So this is something that we will get later on once we start testing the process. And again, if we need to send the body, we will do it later on. And this is the basic setup I have at this stage of the building. Let's go back and see where do we stand. Okay, so I'll just fast forward this process and I'll meet you at the other side. Okay, so now that it finished, we should have an application running, but before we will test it, so here, if you remember, what we want to do is take the test URL. I'll just copy this and then I'll add this here to save it and let's do this. Can you generate a local tunnel link and save it in the end local? Okay, so now it created the local tunnel URL, right? So I'll, I just copy this, the callback URL, and I just paste it here in the environment local and I'll save it. Okay, perfect. Now let's close all saved windows. Perfect. Let's close this and this. Let's create a new terminal. Let's see that we are in the right assistant. Great. And npm run dev. Okay. So we have the assistant and let's try sending her a message. Hey, is this working? Okay, perfect. So what happened was this, right? So there was a problem in the webhook and it solved everything and I just asked him, if now based on this, it will work, meaning if I'll send the website URL, will I get a request? And if so, will I have the user message and the callback URL? So something I just figured out, which I think is very important is when I'm doing a test workflow. So if I'll just go here, when you use the webhook in the test URL, what happened is that you need to test the workflow. So every time you want, you need to click test workflow. If you just want it to be operated from cursor, so every time, for example, in the app you already send, you'll just use the production URL. So you take this URL and in cursor, you just integrate this into the webhook uh, URL in the end local. And then that means that every time it will automatically send this call to this URL. So now it worked and we had an execution. So you can see that I had this execution, but it was stopped here. So I'll press copy to editor 
So I want to see what came and it didn't continue because there is another route. So because it switches, so because I used it as a telegram trigger, I created a switch that define if this is an audio file or a text file. Now that we are setting it up from the webhook, I need to define another one, which is probably going to be... What we did is two things, and I hope it will work. So I, I took it from the switch itself. So if it's a webhook, understand that it's a webhook based on the idea that there is a body message, JSON, which we have right now here. And if it is, just say this is a webhook. So if it's a webhook, set this text. So take those, map those fields from the input, which is text, that's the body message, and call back URL and send them here. What I'll also, I don't think because it's a test. So what we'll do is, let's try it again. Let's first save this. Now, Hey, is this working? Let's send it, go back here, executions. Okay. So now it continued up until here, so it works. So we got the text, we got the URL, and window memory buffer. So we didn't got the chat ID. So for now, I just put the JSON text here to see if it works. Let's save it and then go to the assistant again. Hey, is this working? And we got another fail. Let's see what's the problem now. Okay, so it goes up until here, which is perfect for us. We just didn't define the output and input yet. So what we'll do is debug in the editor and we need to define the switch. We'll go back here and what we will do is, okay, so the switch is, for now we'll just define this if body message exists, output name webhook, and we can use the same one that we used here, which is the text. Uh, sorry, if the text exists, then we use telegram. Um, perfect, special, okay. So this should go to the webhook and here we should be able to just take the callback URL and put this here and let's save and test this now. Okay, let's check again. We are moving, we are getting there. Great, so we got the HTTP in valid URL. So the problem is that it's not defined, but now we get this. So again, debugging editor, unpin, let's go here. Let's delete this. Let's put the callback URL. Now we should be defined, test it. Ah, oh, we cannot, save. Okay, hey, is this working? Send. So the tunnel itself is unavailable. So let's do something else. Let's go to cursor and let's generate a new tunnel link. I will add it to the end local manually. Okay, so what happened was that we generated a new script that kept the tunnel active because the problem was that the tunnel all the time collapsed when we created a new response. So 
once we did it, what I did is I went and I checked and in the HTTP request, we did send the output. So I gave it um, a request to, for example, let's do it now. Hey, can you turn on the lights in the office? And there we have it. The office lights are on. And in the end, we do get the execution. So all of the lights are on now, which is pretty cool, I have to say. And now we do get the execution. It's a success. And as you can see in the end, it says all lights in the office have been successfully turned on. Anything else I can assist you with? Probably the only problem that we see here is that I'm processing your request uh, and we don't really get the information. So I'll just grab this, paste it here. I can see that we get a positive response from the app, but I don't get it in the chat. Not from the app, from an intent, but I don't get it in the chat. I attached an image, please check and fix. And yes, there you have it. This is how you start a new project, an MVP, you build it up, you connect it to a webhook, you install the local tunnel, you create the local tunnel, and instead of hard coding, all of the processes within your application, you can just use AI agent to do so.